I came up with this idea while watching one of the Moto movies. I can't remember which one, but one of the riders had a moon sand table that they built tracks and played with toy bike bikes on, so I decided to build one for my kids. I built this out of scrap, so I was making up the design as I went, which led to some standing around with my hands in my pockets. I put fresh clean edges on one piece of the scrap to give me my base of the table, and then after that I was trying to cut the sides that I was going to use, uh, like the ones in this picture right here, to hold the sand in. I used this technique of using my large square as a guide, which I went over in another video, but for some reason the saw kept getting stuck. As you can see here, the saw would stop and then it would mess up the cut. I still don't know exactly what was happening that caused the to blade to stop cutting. My best guess is that the board would flex and pinch the blade, even though it wouldn't stop it from spinning, it would stop it from moving forward. Um, when I made little cuts like that, it was fine, but again, it kept it kept stalling out and not allowing me to continue to cut. So maybe somebody that's a woodworker can let me know what I was doing wrong in the comments. Um, but I tried this uh, quite a few times and messed up a few pieces of the sides that I was trying to use. We ended up reusing these for the legs, which you'll see later but uh, you'll see it get stuck here again in just a second. See, just like that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow me to cut. So I got desperate. No, no, not that desperate. Just desperate enough for me to text a friend that had a table saw and we went and cut down these pieces there. I didn't get any footage of cutting down those pieces, so to make it up to you, here's a picture of a baby panda. Anyway, after all the pieces were cut, I just nailed on all the sides with uh, my tack nailer, <laughs> making sure that two of the sides obviously were long enough to cover the exposed edges of the other pieces that went flush with the board. And this was all going great until I ran out of nails right here and had to reload. So I did that. And hopefully Matt doesn't give me a channel strike for using that in his video. So all of those pieces made up the box to hold the sand. And these pieces are for the legs. Uh, I decided to cut them all at once so they'd all be level instead of trying to use a measuring tape to try to make and pencil marks to try to make sure they're all the same height. That never seems to quite go as planned. But cutting them all at the same time usually does the trick. So... First I just cleared off all the edges so they were all flush on one side and then I measured them to length and then cut them all the same. Um, I followed up by making these, tried to make these legs strong by turning them into little L shapes that will mount to the corners of the boxes so that way it won't want to rock back and forth, it'll have the strength it needs for kids while it's pushing up against it. So I made all four of them that same way. I then, magically without sound, uh, nailed all the legs onto the box with my brad nailer, and also without sound and slightly out of frame, I decided I was going to screw them onto the top of the box as well so it would have that little extra clamping force so the legs wouldn't want to bend the nails and go anywhere. Uh, I don't know if it'll help the hold, hold, I don't know if it'll help hold the table together longer, but at least I tried. Also, you get a nice shot of uh, the back of my arm there. Don't worry, it'll be over soon. In an attempt to make this look a little more professional, I bought some uh, iron-on melamine edging and, well, I ironed it on. I hope the name made it clear, but in case it didn't, I wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, just irons on, like with an iron your mom would use to make sure your nice shirt wasn't wrinkly before church. Um, I just bought the stuff at my local hardware store, but I'm sure you can get it online at Amazon or whatever. Eventually, I'll start putting links to that stuff in the description, but today is not that day. 
Uh, in order to cut off the excess, I just grabbed my utility knife and used the board that it was ironed onto as the guide. Uh, it cuts pretty easy, uh, but also if you mess up putting this stuff on, you can remove it or adjust it uh, with the iron. You just get it hot again, uh, push it in place while the glue is warm, and then <clears throat> straighten it out and let it cool back down and it'll hold itself in place. And these pieces right here, not attached to the box for holding the sand or the legs, are going to be the lids for this project. To put the edging all the way around, I tried making it one continuous piece, but I don't recommend it because it just cracked uh, as it was turning those sharp corners. Uh, anyway, uh, after I covered all the edges with the edging, I decided to make a mess with caulking, and it worked. I made quite a mess. Uh, the caulk tip was clogged up, and hey, I know what you're thinking. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, it's caulk. C-A-U-L-K. Uh, I had to cut most of the novel nozzle off of the caulking, and it wasn't easy to apply like it normally it is. So my goal was to just fill up all the little quarters with this painter's trim caulk so the sand wouldn't get stuck in there and... Uh, I guessed that all the excess would wipe off, and it did, so it wasn't too bad. And I guess I put this clip in the wrong order because the edging was done a second ago, and now it's not. Uh, well, this isn't about continuity, and this step is fine here. I just wanted to mention it because uh, I am using piano hinges. I needed the hinges to attach to something so the lid would actually open. If the hinge went in that gap, then it would interfere with the legs. So I just tapped that in place with the hammer, made sure it was all flush, and then uh, I tacked it in place with my brad nailer again. Speaking of those hinges, uh, this is the first time I've ever installed any. I'm, I don't typically use piano hinges on anything, so if this is the wrong way, um, I have no idea. Please let me know if there's a better way to do it. Uh, I just wanted to show you what I did, not show you how to do it. Uh, I just taped them in place and then used a center punch to mark the centers of the holes of the hinge and then pre-drilled the holes and then screwed it in and did that on both sides. So I'm not going to show you that for, for all of the things. To keep the hinge from having to support the weight, like in that picture or in this clip, uh, I bought these folding shelf brackets from Amazon. They were about $20 per set, and they seemed to do a fine job. Uh, I installed them by centering them on the leg and making sure they were square with the edges and screwing them in place. Uh, later, my kid dropped the lid on them and ripped them out, so I ended up using uh, drywall anchors uh, to fill the hole and then put the screws into the drywall anchors. Um, but they hold the lid open just fine so the kids can play on it and use it as an additional play surface to the table and they just go up and down like this. Uh, I also went to a vinyl shop and had these custom stickers made for my kids so they would each have their own place to park their motorcycles and monster trucks or whatever that they're playing with on this table and after applying those in place um, I just filled it with sand, and it was time to let the kids play. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave, had to find a way to change. I had to leave to find my way Caught up in a daydream I be in my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place See, cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings But success is a finicky thing And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be I don't wanna let myself 